if you're someone who doesn't want to work a corporate job and doesn't like the idea of working 9 till 5, then becoming an archaeologist might be your calling. Archaeologists are responsible for some of history's most incredible finds. Every so often though they come across some strange artefacts. One of those is that of the Paracas skull, which are best known for their elongated look. One photograph is making the rounds showing what looks like a piece of metal which has been embedded inside the skull. It quickly got shared by people who said it then looked like a large microchip, or it could be some type of ancient technology that was used by our ancestors. Although many labelled the photograph as fake, saying that it was likely photoshopped in order to get it like this, the image is actually real, and was first posted by the Museum of Osteology. The Museum of Osteology made the post on social media, and since putting it up it's gone viral. They said the following in the post, Not on public display, a proven elongated skull with metal surgically implanted after returning from battle, estimated to be from around 2000 years ago. One of our more interesting and older pieces in the collection. We don't have a ton of background on this piece, but we do know he survived the procedure. Based on the broken bone structure surrounding the repair, you can see that it's tightly fused together. It was a successful surgery. End quote. Many commented on the post saying how incredible this artifact is, but were equally confused as to how such a procedure would be carried out. One person said the following, What type of metal is this? Has that been tested? How did they manage to get this inside someone during a time like this? It looks very well done. End quote. While another person said the following. This metal inlay is incredible. It really shows us how little we know about our ancient history. Who would have thought that something like this was possible? It's incredible to think the person survived this. I'm not sure though I'd like to have a piece of metal fused to my skull without anaesthetic. It makes you wonder what other discoveries are out there waiting to be found. End quote. This isn't the only interesting find in regards to these skulls. Researchers who work closely with the Prakas skulls have said they've made some new discoveries. These skulls were first discovered in the Prakas region of Peru, a desert on the south coast of the country. Giulio Tello, a proven archaeologist, was the first to discover these astonishing skulls in 1928. What initially stood out as the most unusual among the skulls was that they were the longest and most protracted skulls to have ever been found before. Over 300 were found, dating back between 2000 and 3000 years old. It wasn't until 2014 when DNA testing revealed unusual findings. It showed that they have mitochondrial DNA, with strange mutations that have not been seen in animals or humans before. The elongated skulls were just the tip of the iceberg. While skulls may become elongated due to deformities or applying force on the skull for a long period of time, this was certainly not the case with the Paracas skulls. A researcher by the name of Ellie Marzulli took note of more than a few characteristics that don't fit the norm for a standard human skull. The eye sockets were found to be much larger, the cheekbones were much more pronounced and the skulls weighed 60% more than that of a normal human skull. He also looked to a specific point of the skull known as the foramen magnum. On a human skull it's situated closer to the jawline, whereas it was closer to the back of the skull on the Paracas ones. After studying over 1,000 skulls, archaeologists also noticed that the frame and magma was smaller, leading them to theorize that it's a genetic trait. This caused them to further research the Paracas skulls, investigating every part in great detail. Experts eventually noticed that they were missing a sagittal suture, which is found on all human skulls, and is a piece of tissue that connects the two parietal bones in the skull. Although not all Prakas skulls were devoid of a sagittal suture, most didn't appear to have one at all. 
this brought upon more confusion and intrigue to those involved in the research. As research continued, three skulls were used to sample DNA, one of which was an infant dating back 800 to 2000 years ago. Hair and bone powder were extracted from the frame and magnum, whilst wearing protective clothing to ensure the samples wouldn't be contaminated. The samples were sent to three different labs in Canada and the United States, and the geneticists weren't given many details, to reduce the risk of creating preconceived notions about the skulls. The DNA results were nothing short of fascinating. They came back explaining that one of the samples found that the hair samples wasn't a sequence found in human DNA. However, the other samples were showing that they came mostly from Eastern Europe, and some from Western Europe. When looking at the bone powder, they found that it originated from Mesopotamia, otherwise known as Syria. Many questions still remain. People are torn over the 2014 DNA analysis of the recovered skulls, that showed that gathered DNA from the remains contained mutations that did not match any known human or primate DNA samples previously recorded. Although the DNA testing was immediately put into question by the scientific community, the lead researcher stands by the results, and asks for those within the scientific community to confirm his findings, and take their own test to show the validity of his claims. It may still take many years before experts are able to provide an adequate explanation for the unusual findings, with some saying that the Prakas skulls will remain a mystery, so we'll have to draw our own conclusions for now. Who knows, maybe this discovery will bring about more news and provide us with the insight needed to better understand the human race, and our untraceable history. So what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Also, what do you make of the metal that was surgically implanted after this individual returned from battle? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.